Hello everyone, I am Tassa, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War event objectives for the Flower Child event in which the daughter of Yasmin is added to the game, and gosh, is it actually a good troop for once. Oh, uh, it is, actually, we might as well just go straight into this thing. This thing is insane. Um, it has Empower. It's an Empower Converter. However, it has two rather unique things going for it. The first is that it gets to conjure a leaf storm. So we already have a troop that is uh, somewhat like this. If we go head over to uh, the good old summer over here, the child of summer, uh, we already have a troop kind of similar to this. It uh, has, has in power. It converts a color into a color and that color that it converts into ends up creating a storm. However, uh, despite this being very strong and it is a lot of use cases for it, uh, there is an extra thing that makes this rather interesting, and that is the coloration of uh, the troop. So, of course, it is converting red to green and creating a green storm, similar to how the other thing is converting brown to red and creating a red storm. However, uh, the unique thing is she uses green, which means she actually feeds mana back to herself, which means any excess mana that you're getting across the entire team, whether you're putting into Rowane, Truffle, Beatrix, any other billion greens out there that needed a lot, um, it's going back to her, so she can get all of her mana right back and be able to cast again. Obviously, after having just converted all red to green, there's not going to be that many. However, there are many ways to clear the board, uh, as well as her own ability, clearing at least some amount of the board. So if she does end up getting her mana back, uh, which is rather rare for something like this, you will be able to go not only have the extra from the storm, not uh, only have all the green for everyone else, but even have a recast on however many reds are still left on the board, or after a board clear, just do it again. And uh, boom, he's right back to full man on all your greens. So this has a lot of potential for many, many broken teams. I will be covering a few of them when we go through them all. Uh, but this is definitely something we'll need to mess around with more in the future, as this mechanic we already know is very strong, based on the brown and the red we already have. However, this also has the added benefit of, you know, feeding more back into itself. Uh, almost reminds me of Leprechaun in that way. Uh, there's only a few Empowers that currently do this within the game, where they actually have the capability to not only turn one Mana Cumulite, but also turn one Mana Cumulite while still getting mana back to themselves, ultimately. And even if you're using this in Last Slot, you're probably getting so much uh, green that uh, it could probably still get it back all the way into itself, similar to how Leprechaun could still cast from Last Slot and still get some back into itself, depending on how good the uh, cast goes. So definitely a trip to keep an eye on and to build around. It's even really good typings, too. Elemental Elf, more so the Elemental part. Uh, however, the elf does allow it to do a few specific things, uh, particularly this week, like the Thursday class event. But the elemental part being particularly interesting as it can be used in any of the many elemental synergy teams, uh, many of which utilize green pretty well, not to mention even just Mirage Queen itself, which gives 50% mana start to all uh, elementals. Not only um, you know has the elemental synergy there, however, it also converts all greens to Doom Skulls, so... This troop has a lot of potential moving forward, and uh, I'm not sure what they've been doing lately with Empowers, but they've been doing a lot of really good ones lately. Like Bane of Mercy was pretty meta-defining, and now we have Daughter of Yasmin. Wonder how many more we'll get in the foreseeable future. Uh, the only bad thing now is uh, the triple Empower Guild War teams <laughs> are only going to keep growing, or at least the effectiveness of double Empower, because uh, Child of Summer already a pretty good one for Red Day, combining that with another. And uh, having another one now that's going to be used on Green Day. Oh gosh, it even has Green Storm to make it even better. Anyways, so uh, let's go now onto the event key drop table. So it is for uh, Forest of Thorns, of course. As far as what that entails, I don't think I actually did it by base rarity here. But uh, basically, it is pretty bad value. Uh, you probably don't want to be using event keys unless you're just looking for Kingdom Stars. Or there was just a particular trip that you really wanted. Uh, keep in mind things that are not in the drop table include Ori. This is only available from some Guild Wars, which we have another one next week, though I'm not sure if we're specifically getting that one. But it's only available from some Guild Wars. You cannot get it in event keys. The other ones that are not in event keys are all four of the Primal Rift uh, troops. And I believe that is it. Let me just double check. Boom, boom, boom. And yeah, that's it. So just the Uriali and the four Primal Rift faction troops. Everything else you see here is available, but there's not really much to go for. King Avalon used for like Life and Death Weaver to get that 50% mana start. Uh, though overall, you know, just not really used much outside that context. Uh, both the two legends here, or, or sorry, both the two mythics here, pretty underwhelming. We covered the mythic tier list uh, the other day, uh, if you guys haven't caught on that yet. But uh, yeah, both of these are pretty mid-tier that are um, not really that sought after, not really that useful. 
Sylvania Mora has an interesting entangle mechanic, but not really something you need compared to better entanglers. Forest Troll is pretty good, uh, particularly with Truffle. However, uh, it's a low enough rarity that you're probably going to get it, going to have it. Uh, getting Rowane maxed, I guess, could be a little bit beneficial. If you really want to go down that route, if you don't have a max Rowane, you can kind of get max Rowane this week. Um, so there's that. Obviously, really good boost ratio, scales throughout the entire game. Um, highly advise using early on in the game as well if you don't already have a copy. And if you don't, you just do Forest of Thorns Kingdom. But, you know, if you want to get it maxed for those extra armor boosts, it can be a little bit beneficial. But overall, it's a pretty skippable week on event keys. Unless you're just looking for some key upgrades. Uh, the kingdom does reach 25 stars as this week, which is another 2,000 gold per uh, day they can potentially end up getting. So that's up over time if you happen to have um, everything to go and complete that out. Aside from that, as far as the guild-related events, we only have one because, gosh, we have absolutely no weekend event this week because, of course, it's arena. But uh, we have extra spell damage. Uh, as far as the event is concerned, very straightforward. It is literally just rarity order. Just don't take the Earth Dreamer and you will be fine. Um, you do get more points for taking the similar rooms. They keep building up more and more points. But because the battles never reset at any point, as long as you're just not taking Earth Dreamer, the lowest rarity one, the one that has the blue ultra rare symbol, as long as you're not taking that one, you should be good to go. So yes, just don't take that troop. As far as teams, uh, we have access to the entirety of Forest of Thorns. Uh, most notable options that we have here, uh, given that we have spell damage, unfortunately we can't run something like an Alder Father team. However, uh, we have Forest Troll for double and green. We have Daughter of Yasmin, which is so absurdly good. We might even honestly just need to cover a video later this week just on her teams because there are uh, a good number of them and I personally haven't had the chance to mess around with most of them yet. Uh, King Avalon for AoE, Green Seer if you want some more greens, uh, Rowan for kill, Selfany Mora for AoE. Um, I guess if you really want to, you could go check Yasmin's Chosen, but honestly at that point you might actually get more value from Selvani Mora because if you look at how little damage she does uh, compared to Selvani Mora getting that boost ratio of 160% per those medals. Um, you're better off just going full AoE, like King Avalon into uh, Sylvani Mora, which I actually do show for the other team there. Uh, but for the cheaper team, we're just all in Rowan. You can even double up on Rowan if you want. Um, and just put a second... Where even is Rowan in all this mess? Alphabetical order, still can't find it. Uh, but yeah, you can just like double up on Rowan or something similar if you don't have this weapon. It's also available in Soul Forge this week, so pretty easy to get. But otherwise, just doubling on it would also be uh, perfectly fine. Anyways, but yeah, pretty straightforward uh, event week. Should be pretty easy. Anyways, next up, uh, all the things going on throughout the week. Uh, I guess it's also worth mentioning the summer thing still going on. Uh, obviously, most of these paid ones are pretty ignorable. However, uh, we do get another free 50 gems. We got one yesterday. We'll get another one on that uh, final day there, uh, which is also Father's Day here in America. Uh, anyways, aside from that, other things we have going on this week. Tuesday, we have ourselves the Fraction event for Primal Rift, and we'll have everything with that to go get our free uh, resources. Uh, it's a green purple restriction that day. Uh, Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time this pet has been available specifically from a guaranteed pet rescue. This was actually the $5 money locked, or, you know, the multi-tier kind of thing. But uh, the $5 plus money locked troop that came in during one of the uh, Legends Reborn events, and then it was immediately in the drop table. However, despite this being in the drop table for the last several months, there's a chance you haven't picked it up. I know personally I haven't been able to get the Infernus like one, so hopefully for the Broken Spire event they'll have that. However, if you haven't been able to pick up this one or haven't maxed it out, I know I personally haven't maxed this yet, um, you'll be able to this Wednesday and get some more copies of it. So that's very nice. Uh, this uh, Wednesday, we're going to be having the... Or sorry, that is the Wednesday thing. This Thursday, we're going to be having the class event for Archer. Archer used to be uh, one of the better hero classes in the game. These days, not as relevant, even less relevant as of today. Because one of the main things uh, Archer was kind of ran for is there's a pretty limited range of what can actually do Greenstorm currently within the game. And now that they just added what is basically the best in slots green stormer into just a billion green mana while also feeding back into itself. Uh, now that we have an option like that, very rarely are you going to be using Archer now. Uh, there's other classes that just ultimately do more damage. Uh, the appeal of its green storm just went drastically down now that we have empowered green storm turn one into mana accumulation. So overall, there isn't really much of a need to use uh, Archer these days. And if you want to use the insta kill, you actually get more overall value from using something like Assassin. Uh, rather than uh, Archer, so it's an even more niche hero class now with the new Empower option that we just got as of today. And Friday, we have no uh, event. <laughs> it's just an arena event, which, uh, of course, is pretty much the equivalent of having no event. Anyway, Soul Forge is very absurdly juicy this week. So, uh, one thing to mention right off the bat, the Karandera glitch that happened last week that made them go and make a super cheap Karandera in Soul Forge 
is still available this week. How long does this last thing? I assumed it would just be last week, but apparently it is still around. And um, yeah, definitely make sure to not miss out on a 1000 diamond uh, Karandera. It is the cheapest it will ever be ever. So uh, definitely make sure to get yourself a copy. It's a pretty good uh, mythic. But speaking of pretty good mythics, guess what is available this week? Good old Iron Hawk. Of course, you're going to need two or three of them in order to use it. One Iron Hawk doesn't really do you any good, unfortunately. However, uh, it looks like <laughs> I guess they uh, deliberately did the Karandera so no one can afford Iron Hawk now. <laughs> Because everyone already spent their thousand on that, but yes, yeah, so if you can afford your double, triple Iron Hawk, uh, definitely make sure to go get it if you don't already have it. It is by far the most absurd thing for farming in the entire game. It is the quickest way to get uh, hero XP, or should say, uh, yeah, hero XP, the bigger number. Uh, it is also, more notably, the quickest way to farm for Paloozas, uh, Gnomes, and Vault Events. Uh, making it a very great option for just getting resources. It is about 40-50% quicker than the next quickest option. So definitely make sure to get yourself two or three uh, Iron Hawks. Uh, definitely at least two if you can end up uh, affording to do so. And uh, if not, well, it'll be available in about another couple months. You'll probably have to wait till like, what, maybe September, October. But um, of course, he will cycle back around. But uh, yeah, it is by far the best farming trip in the entire game. And 100% should go make sure you go get yourself two or three copies. Aside from that, if you happen to have all of that, Elder Dragon's not that bad. Uh, has a loop into itself. OAOE damage, four times curse. Uh, not the best four times cursor in the game, but uh, one of the better perpetual ones, as far as constantly doing it over and over again. Also gets to lower down their magic uh, some, which is a rather niche mechanic, but you know, still pretty good. Uh, it gets to stack this quite a bit with how much it loops as well, so uh, basically it's better Ella McGrim in almost every single possible way. And uh, definitely worth considering if you already have the other two big ones, the basically free Karandera and the double triple Ironhawk, if you already have those, uh, could consider the Elder Dragon. It's not an absolute must-have, but it's an interesting utility troop to have. Anyways, uh, one pretty noteworthy thing about uh, Soulforge weapons, there's basically two. Uh, the most noteworthy one is, well, there's a Hammer of Nature right here, as you may see. And you might be wondering, how do you not own this? Well, it's in version 6.9, when we got that most ver uh, recent version, technically we're at in version 6.9.5R467.45. <laughs> Anyways, in version 6.9, uh, we ended up getting um, three new weapons. And basically, new, newer players during the new tutorial, whatever system they have now, now have the option of picking between one of these three weapons when they first start off the game. Uh, the best one of these to pick is the uh, Farce of Thorns weapon, which oddly enough is also available this week. However, um, yeah, there's three of them. Uh, one associated to Broken Spire, one associated to Farce of Thorns, and one associated to Glacial Peaks. Uh, these will all be available on their respective weeks, so obviously the Farce of Thorns one is available right now. The Broken Spire one will be available whenever next Broken Spire is. And similarly, the Glacial Peaks one will be available whenever the next Glacial Peaks one is. So, um, yeah, make sure to go pick these up. Uh, obviously, most people do not have access to these. And uh, even if you're a newer player, you only have access to one of the three. So uh, now is a great time to uh, go get the hammer if you don't already have this one. So we'll go and uh, pick this up. And one thing I actually do want to check, does this thing get entangled? Uh, this definitely seems like something that should. And I kind of hope it does, because this would make it even more so the best one of the three. Uh, I assume it's like entangle and something else. Uh, yeah, there you go. That means this one has Entangle, the other one has Freeze, and the other one probably has Enrage, probably. But yeah, this one's definitely the best of the three. Uh, Skulls are really annoying early on in the game, so you want to mitigate those out. So yeah, 100%, if you are a newer player who just started absurdly recently, um, yeah, definitely make sure you go the green one. Uh, and otherwise, well, you just get in Soul Forge. so even if you chose something else, you can just get it pretty cheaply in Soul Forge uh, this week. So uh, definitely make sure to do so. Obviously, later in the game, not much for use for using that weapon. Uh, there are way better ones in the game, but that's honestly not that bad of a starting weapon to pick as, uh, you know, right when you start off the game. But, um, yeah, pretty cool. Anyways, in other news, uh, I guess we go over all the teams now, as I believe that is everything up to this point. So, let's start from the top. World event. Uh, this is a Farce of Thorns restriction. We are going to be running basically full AoE. Uh, we have a bunch of extra spell damage, so we're going to go self any more onto King Avalon. And that's pretty much the whole premise. Uh, you might notice we're using Daughter of Yasmin in almost every single one of these teams. And uh, that is mostly because I want to mess with her a lot this week. And uh, she is very, very strong. So <laughs> now is definitely the time to do so. And she also synergizes with almost every single thing this week as well. So works out perfectly. Uh, but yeah, just basically spamming double AoE with the Empower of Daughter of Yasmin to get them rolling. Next, we have the lower rarity version, which uh, I kind of already mentioned this earlier. You could double up on Rain Rowane if you don't want to get Elemental Bow. Oh, did I forget to mention that when I was in Soul Forge? Yeah, the other thing in Soul Forge is worth getting is Elemental Bow. Um, you probably want to prioritize getting that one weapon if you haven't already. 
Otherwise, Elemental Bow is the strongest weapon you can craft this week from Forest of Thorns. Uh, has Elemental Synergy, great with four times Elemental Team. And guess what this is? A four times Elemental Team. Uh, Far Shrill's Elemental, Hero is Elemental, is Elemental, Rowan is Elemental, and of course, uh, Daughter of Yasmin, already powerful in every possible way, is also the best typing currently within the game. Because for whatever reason, new Divine Daemon or Goblin is now Elemental, as they seem to want to put every single best troop in Elemental these days. Anyways, as far as the faction event, this will be tomorrow on Tuesday. Uh, the faction restriction is Primal Rift, which is a green-purple faction, so you're allowed to use any green-purples. So, uh, you might be noticing we're kind of using um, Daughter of Yasmin in a bit of a weird spot. However, uh, one thing to keep in mind that is a mechanic that can be used uh, is Empower Troops do not block mana theoretically. Um, because if we were to cast Leprechaun here, um, she already has full mana. So, putting this green here is not actually blocking our green. And the reason for Daughter of Yasmin in this order is because she's the converter. If you already know you're going to be getting a 5 times green, which will excess feed into everything else, you can simply just cast her immediately off the front and get your 4 times greens, 5 times greens, and know for sure you're going to extra turn, get all of her mana, and get excess mana into the Rowain. And if that doesn't happen, you can simply just cast Leprechaun, get your Rowains rolling, cast your Rowains, and, you know, just auto win. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the game plan then. Uh, ideally, just do Leprechaun, but if you have red to green alignment, cast Daughter of Yasmin instead, and um, just do it that way. So pretty much regardless of what you do with her, she's not blocking your mana, so works out perfectly. Anyways, for the higher range, we're going with a Whip Spinner Weaver team. So, uh, of course, Daughter of Yasmin, as is pretty much every single one of these teams, we're going to be utilizing this new red to green convert into Green Storm. Uh, excess greens can go back into her, however, we're also using it to utilize Green Beatrix. As a bunch of uh, cleanse we can end up using and basically we're going to be using the triple damage off of a uh, web spinner having a bunch of ways to get additional green and if it ever dies we can simply just resummon it off of the uh, weaver so we have a double true damage that we'll be using to kill them out with a racking weaver with beatrix as our main damage source but we can also still go down the route of web spinner loop into itself with green storm while also still having that triple damage skull so basically I have two different win conditions as well as a way to keep infinitely reviving our first slot because uh, even though you have a limited amount of Rakn Weaver resummons you could do in a given battle, of course, uh, you're going to have multiple battles within a faction. So even if you happen to miss it on one, if your Weaver does end up going down, you'll be able to easily just resummon it on the second one and just run true damage for the fight that you uh, have to do that for. Anyways, as far as pure faction, a nice diverse team is just Alderfather. However, that's not actually how you run the te uh, team ultimately. Uh, you actually want your first Alder Father or whatever you put here. You can actually put anything as your first slot or, you know, anything that's specifically Primal Rift. Uh, any of the four. However, um, you want to basically kill out your first Alder Father and then have it replaced with a Trent. Uh, he will summon either one of two things. A Green Golem, which you don't want to have happen, and a Trent, which you do want to have happen. Ideally, what you want to do on the first fights is, or the fight after that, if it seems a little bit easier to do it on that fight, is basically let your first Alder Father die, uh, then summon, hope it's a Trent. If it's not a Trent, let your Green Golem die and then try to summon again. And basically keep doing this until you summon a Trent. And then go into every other fight with Trent as your first slot and three Alder Fathers following it. Keep in mind, you are not allowed to start your team with this Trent, as Trent is not from the faction. You can start with Green Golem if you want, but Trent specifically is not. Uh, but you're allowed to finish with it for pure faction. So you basically kill out your Alder Father, have a Trent summon there, or keep killing out your first slot until it is, and then go win the rest of your faction using Trent into Triple Alder Father. Just make sure not to start your team that way, otherwise it will not count as pure faction. Anyways, as far as Archer class, this is specifically uh, Elves from Forest of Thorns. So any Elves, and guess who falls under the Elf category? <laughs> Daughter of Yasmin. So uh, we could just feed green quickly into an AoE, and we're just using Black Manacle to hold down the line. So we're just either doing Black Manacle if we have access to purple, and if we have green alignment, we're just going into Double King Avalon, which is pretty much the game plan for the uh, Thursday class event for the quick kill. Uh, trials, we did get ourselves a new shiny trial team. Uh, as far as order, we're going to be going with uh, Farce Troll in first slot for the doubling of the green. Uh, Earth Dreamer in second slot because uh, it doesn't really do much. Uh, although, I shouldn't say that. Uh, there are basically two ways you can go about winning this. And um, the first is stack your Farce Troll to be unkillable, uh, which would be Earth Dreamer constantly summoning, or not summoning, but uh, buffing your first slot, giving it a bunch of life and attack, uh, making it as bulky as possible, and then you just one shot, two shot Skull with Farce Troll. Uh, the other alternative, and probably the more realistic one, especially if you have lower stats, uh, is to go with King Avalon. Uh, constantly have him keep uh, chipping them down with full AoE. He will keep creating meat shields that you'll be able to go use to tank with. And that's pretty much the whole plan is, you know, he just keeps casting over and over and over again. You keep getting meat shield summons, 
keep using Far Troll and most notably um, Green Seer to end up getting all your greens. And you just keep doing that until he chips them down to nothing. And that will probably be the main core, but you have basically two different ways to win. Either Earth Dreamer constantly upgrading your Farce Troll, or alternatively your Farce Troll and Green Seer feeding into King Avalon, him constantly chipping them down. Uh, you can use any of the resummons he gets to also chip them down, but you just keep using AoE over and over again until you win, and that's pretty much the whole game plan with the Trials. Um, and you can kind of adjust it accordingly, depending on if which plan you kind of want to go for. But, uh, like, for example, if you want to go all in on that, you can technically go, like, Farce Troll, Green Seer, King Avalon, have this completely die. But I actually do kind of want to try the Farce Troll buff version, so we're kind of keeping alive if we can. I just kind of keep the whole team alive. Anyways, uh, finally, uh, team I actually want to go use. And you know what? We'll go fight whatever this is. Uh, hey, Bill Warhammer! Hey, is this Bill Warhammer from the streams? Hello, Bill Warhammer. I'm not sure if I've ever fought you in-game. I've seen you in, like, almost every stream we ever do, though. Uh, I wonder if this actually is him. It seems like it. Based on this level, I would assume so. <laughs> That's a pretty active player right there. Anyways, I completely forgot to double check if we have green to red. So obviously the main premise of this troop is immediately get green to red alignment, hopefully. Uh, get all the mana you need and then just infinite truffle. And that is the entire game plan. Uh, oh no! I wasn't able to go get my, uh, green storm because of the thing. Come on, I need my greens. Okay, you know what? We're gonna- Ooh, yeah, we're gonna go for this here. No, we missed! Oh, I should have waited. I should have waited till we had Guarantee Infinite Loop before I went for it. Oh no, now we're gonna need to get all of our mana back again. That's not ideal. Fine, we'll go get our mana back. And go get actual Infinite Loop. I didn't even double check. What is even his team right now? Hopefully it's not anything too annoying. That's just a shuffle thing. Oh wait, does it have Infinite Loop? Wait, which one is this? Yeah, it is using the Chalcedonic Infinite Loop. Oh no! <laughs> we got frozen on the guy too. Though We're not frozen on green yet, so that's fine. Uh, let's see, is it ever gonna end? Uh, Chalcedonic generally doesn't end, but it looks like we do get an end there. Nice. Uh, we are frozen on that, but we're not frozen on the green, so we can do that. And, uh, not the ideal way we want to do this. Uh, ideally, we want to go get the true infinite loop, but, uh, we can still make this work. Uh, we have alignment, and it's so nice her just being able to feed into herself. Oh, wait, never mind. That's another truffle. <laughs> wait, I thought that was her for a second. Well, that's fine. We have double truffle. Uh, we were- the biggest issue that happened there, I did not realize it denied our red storm there. But, uh, let me go show this real quick on, uh... Actually, we're going to do another PvP. We're using Infinite Loop for once, so... And it's probably one of the most infinite of the Infinite Loops. The good old Double Truffle, Farce Troll, and the Storm. Which, uh, once you get rolling properly, is a true infinite. It will never, ever end. So, uh, we're just going to start taking a little bit of mana here. We do have full mana, but not alignment. But I'm going to go for it, just to kind of get things rolling. Uh, let's see. Wait. I just realized... Is she the one creating the red storm right now? <laughs> Wait, is that a glitch? Did they basically copy paste uh, Child of Summer, make it so it's green convert, but then forget to change the storm? Am I going crazy? What's creating the red storm? <laughs> because I believe it's her right now. I think they made a mistake somewhere. So hold up. Well, hopefully that will be fixed soon so we can actually use her properly. Wait, is it really her creating the, <laughs> the Red Storm? Oh no, she's not that good for the next uh, day or two or week until they fix that. Wait, 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 I gotta see this. Is she actually creating Red Storm? Convert red to green. Conjure a Leaf Storm. Leaf Storm is definitely green. Let me see. <laughs> oh wow, I did not just notice that till now. That is, uh, that is, uh, that's a thing. That is definitely a thing. Well, that makes her a bit weaker right now. Oh, we can't properly use her then. Well, I guess we'll have to wait till later this week before we cover a video on her because, uh, yeah, she kind of needs that green storm to function. Uh, that is kind of her whole gimmick. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure how it's red storm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, hopefully it'll fix that uh, very soon. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll fix it by later today. May could, might take them a couple days. Might take them a week. But, um, yeah, that's not what that's supposed to do. But once she is working properly... <laughs> <laughs> so that would explain what happened on the preview. That is so weird. But, um, yeah, I guess we have to wait to fully utilize her, so. But I am definitely really curious to mess around with this. Even, honestly, even with that doing it incorrectly, still pretty nice. Uh, it's, you know, standard converter at that point, even still. Um, just the fact that she's a empower green, or, you know, empower convert to green that feeds back into herself. Still that alone, even without our green storm, pretty solid. And obviously, once they get that fixed... If this does exactly what it says it will do, once they have that fix, that's going to be absurdly strong. There's a lot of stuff we'll have to mess around with. But uh, yeah, <laughs> apparently Daughter of Yasmin not currently working properly. 
Uh, I, I honestly feel like they just took Child of Summer, copy pasted it, and just for fixed one part and forgot to switch the other par part. Uh, seems like exactly what happened there. Though I don't mind. I honestly wish we'd get a version of that for every uh, color troop. Uh, currently, we only have it for red and green, unless I'm forgetting one. Uh, it'd be kind of nice if we have it for every color. Um, yeah, maybe they will over time. We already have it for two. And uh, we might have it for all of them. But anyways, guys, that'll wrap it up here for now. Uh, we will be uh, going and uh, streaming tonight. Of course, doing all the tasks, everything else for out the uh, entire week, all the objectives. And uh, that's pretty much all the objectives as, as far as the end of uh, today. Because the only other thing really going on this week is what? Wednesday, we got the pet thingy. Um, and that's it. <laughs> like, it's a little bit of gems on the Friday, so. Uh, mostly just that new troop. Because, of course, we just have the arena event and everything. So, pretty team week, but we got some pretty busy weeks coming up. Guild War next week. The following week being the summer event. Uh, the week after that probably being patch. Um, and then, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff coming with the patch. The big 7.0. So, I uh, could only imagine what that would end up bringing in. But anyways, guys, if you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week and a wonderful Father's Day uh, later this weekend. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching.